Now, the rest of the story. Jim had a jagged scar on his right leg. He won't talk about it or when or how he got it. It was a war injury, you see. Ever since that terrible time, Jim has simply refused to discuss the war. What we know of Jim's combat experience, we've learned from his brother and his longtime friends. Jim was first off the landing craft at Anzio Beach, ordered so by his commanding officer, who, noting Jim was very tall, tallest in the troop, declared that he'd be the least likely to drown. Anzio, of course, is a town on the west coast of Italy where the Allies landed in January 1944. Anyway, there was an Italian farmhouse in which a German machine gun nest was harbored, and Jim was in the patrol that had been sent to knock it out. He would never forget walking up the outside stairs and the awful suspense, wondering if the next moment would be his last, then the hand-to-hand fight with the Germans, And there was that dreadful moment in the middle of the later battle when Jim was shot in the right leg. The force of the bullet knocked him backward into a stream. The water was shallow enough so that the young infantry private could keep his head above the surface. But then he realized he could not move. On his back with the icy water rushing over him, an uneventful life rushed through his brain like a speeded-up newsreel, a life which had barely begun. There he was singing in the church choir back in hometown Minneapolis. There he was in the middle of his freshman year at Beloit College in Wisconsin, staring at his draft notice, trying to imagine the adventures which lay before him. And so they flickered back and forth, the dead memories and the living nightmare and the icy water rushing madly on. Eighteen hours would pass before the medics found Jim in that frigid stream. The effects of exposure, the ragged hole in his leg would require more treatment than he could get on the field. So Jim was taken to a hospital, and there he stayed for almost a year. But 25 years later, 1969, Jim returned to Anzio. And he went looking for that farmhouse where he had grappled with German machine gunners, and he found it. He even searched for the battlefield where he'd been wounded those long years before. He could not find that, but it had stayed with him. I mean, Jim carried that battle with him wherever he went, and he does even to this day. You see, the entertainment industry, movies, television, honors even still. The actor, infantry private Jim became James Arness. James Arness, of course you remember him the long-running TV series Gunsmoke. In particular, I'll bet you'll recall that distinctive rolling stride of Marshal Matt Dillon as he stalked down Main Street with his hand on his holstered six-gun. Well, that Jim Arness came home from that war with that subtle swagger, as somebody once called it, a subtle swagger, turned out to be a real cowboy's gate created by a German bullet. And though publicly he never talked about it, the world saw it, and you and I saw it, and we will remember forever in reruns the rest of the story.